So here are three scales where we've written down the pointer position to the correct precision. So everything we could read off the scale plus one estimated digit. Now all of these numbers that we've written down, they're called significant figures, meaning that they're scientifically significant. They were based on an observation. In the next part of the video, we're going to be talking about how you deal with significant figures when you're doing a calculation. In other words, how you round off values correctly. When you do a calculation, sometimes your calculator gives you a whole bunch of digits, and the question is, how many of those should you round off? Because you don't want to lose information by rounding off too aggressively, but you also don't want to imply you had more precision in your experiment than you actually did by leaving too many digits there. So there are some rules for determining how many significant figures you should keep on your final answer when you do a calculation. There are two rules, one for dealing with addition and subtraction, and the other for dealing with multiplication and division. I'm going to show you the one for multiplication and division first. So when you have two numbers, and you want to multiply or divide them, the rule is that you count up how many significant figures each of the two numbers has, and whichever number has the fewest significant figures sets how many significant figures your answer is allowed to have. So for example, this top number has one, two, three, four significant figures. The bottom number has one, two significant figures. That means the final answer is only allowed to have two significant figures. So if you plug this into your calculator, it will give you this number. However, we still need to round this off to have only two significant figures. And you do that like this. You either write it as 4600, where the two zeros are placeholder zeros, they don't actually count as significant figures, or you can use scientific notation to just write down the two significant figures, 4.6 times 10 to the 3. When you want to add or subtract two numbers, the rule is different. Instead of counting up how many significant figures the two numbers have, you instead count up how many decimal places they have. So this first number has one decimal place, and the second number has zero decimal places. And that sets how many decimal places our final answer is allowed to have. So the final answer is only allowed to have zero decimal places. So plugging this into your calculator gives you this value, and then you want to round it off to have zero decimal places. Like this. Five or higher rounds up, four or less rounds down, so we get 262. Now for this rule, I can actually explain why we're rounding off like this. Remember that the last digit is always the estimated digit. That means we're unsure about whether this five is exactly a five, and that uncertainty translates down to this five in the answer. Likewise, we're not sure that this nine is exactly a nine, and that uncertainty translates down to the one in the answer. And if we're unsure whether that one is really a one, then there's no point in writing anything that comes after it. So we round that off so that we only have one digit in the final answer that's an estimate. And I'll leave you with one final case, and that is that sometimes your calculator gives you too few digits. So this is the addition subtraction rule. That means we count up how many decimal places the two values have, and both of these have one, two decimal places. That means the final answer is also supposed to have two decimal places. So in these cases, do pad the end of your answer with zeros.